Welcome to worship on Sunday, September 11th, 2022. One uh, name has been added to the prayer list since it was printed. That name is Barbara. A few announcements today. Immediately after worship today, we will have a special congregational meeting. Uh, all members are asked to attend. If you are staying for the meeting, please just be seated after the dismissal, and we'll get it started in a few minutes. Starting next week, on September 18th, we will begin to share communion in a way very similar to how we did it prior to COVID. Uh, the assisting minister and I will distribute wafers and the communion assistants will pour wine into each cup. Uh, we will still have some of the to-go cups we've been using, if anyone prefers that. Uh, if you have agreed to be on the communion assistant list, uh, please try to be here next Sunday at 9 o'clock uh, to attend a training and refresher course. Also next week, Sunday school will begin again in person for the first time in over two years. Uh, all children age two and up are invited here at 8.30 a.m. next week. Anything else about that, Kim? No. Uh, kids and uh, people and adults involved in, in Sunday school will get a blessing during church? Yes. Um, all those involved in, in the Sunday school program will be blessed during worship that day. Yeah, and you. we did have Sunday school on Zoom for two years. It's not like we didn't do anything for two years, but this will be the first in-person Sunday school in two years. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> bring your kids, bring your neighbors, bring any uh, anybody you can find. Um, Please see your announcement folder for information about a praise band concert this evening in Penn Argyll. I don't know what, what, uh, what rain plans they have for that in case it's still raining. Uh, a used stair lift in very good condition is available for anyone interested. Um, please see your announcement folder for contact information um, for the person who has that. Uh, looking ahead, our annual Blessing of the Animals service will be held outside in the Grove on Saturday, October 1st at 11 a.m. And finally, uh, each week near the end of worship, we sing a brief seasonal choral blessing. Uh, these choral blessings, which were written by our resident hymn writer, Joe Schultes, uh, are mostly to the tunes of familiar hymns. However, one of them, the one for Autumn, uh, is to an original tune composed by Bonnie Schultes. Um, we will begin using that one today. So in case you don't remember the tune from when we last sang it in 2019, um, Martin will play through it once before we sing it. If there are no other announcements I neglected to make, let us worship the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. 
Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you, and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Have you ever been lost? You've been lost? Okay. Anybody else ever been lost? Yeah. What's it feel like to be lost? Scary. Annoying, okay. Frustrating. Lonely. Confused. These are all really good emotions. Well, they're not good emotions, but they're, they're good, good answers to the question, yeah. Well, when I was about six, I went to a big church event with my dad at Gettysburg College. And there was a time when he told me to meet him at a certain place there. And I went there. But my dad wasn't there. I waited. He still wasn't there. I started to get scared. If eventually, I started hearing sirens nearby. I heard sirens nearby, and I got really scared because I thought maybe it was the police, and maybe they were looking for a six-year-old kid. 
I was scared they'd find me and arrest me, thinking that I was the kid they were looking for. It sounds kind of silly, right? But it was really scary to me that day. And finally, my dad found me, and he was so happy to see me, and I was happy to see him. Now, I don't remember if I went to the wrong place, or if he went to the wrong place, or if I was early or he was late, but I do remember feeling scared and then feeling okay. So let me tell you a story that Jesus told. Jesus said, if any of you has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will you do? Won't you leave the 99 in the field and go look for the lost sheep until you find it? And then when you find it, you'll be so glad that you'll put that sheep on your shoulder and carry it home. Then you'll call in your friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. And then Jesus told the people another story. He said, what will a woman do if she has 10 silver coins and loses one of them? Won't she light a lamp, sweep the floor, and look carefully until she finds it? Then she'll call in her friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate, I found the coin that I lost. And Jesus said, in the same way, God's angels are happy when even one person turns to him. So whenever you're lost, Jesus is looking for you. He wants to find you, and when he does, he'll be so happy that he'll celebrate. Thanks for your help. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for looking for us. Help us to always try to follow you. Amen. Okay, thanks. You can go back to your seats. A reading from Exodus. While Moses is on Mount Sinai, the people grow restless and make a golden calf to worship. Today's reading shows Moses as the mediator between an angry God and a sinful people. Moses reminds God that the Israelites are God's own people and boldly asks mercy for them. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that their God brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented concerning the disaster that the Lord planned for the chosen people. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified, and you speak in the right of your judgment. Indeed, I was born and steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within me. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A reading from 1 Timothy. The 
The letters to Timothy and Titus are called the pastoral epistles because they contain advice especially intended for leaders in the church. Here, the mercy shown to Paul, who once persecuted the church, is cited as evidence that even the most unworthy may become witness to the grace of God. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to, ha to save sin sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the sovereign of a the ages, a mortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or which of you having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp? Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Oliver was seven years old. He was sitting on his grandmother's lap. He always loved when he had the chance to spend the night at Grammy's house. It was a chance to play games with her, a chance to listen to her stories, and a chance to eat all the ice cream he wanted. Well, whenever Oliver stayed at Grammy's house, the two of them had a special time that she called devotions, right before bed. She would read him a story from the Bible, and then they would talk about it for a few minutes. Then they would say the Lord's Prayer and it was time for bed. Oliver liked devotion time. It wasn't as good as ice cream, but it was still nice. He especially liked that he could always cuddle up with her on her lap. Well, tonight's story was the story we just heard in the Gospel. The story about the Pharisees who were grumbling. <clears throat> the story about the woman who found her lost coin. The story about the shepherd who found his lost sheep. So Oliver, what did you think of the story tonight, asked Grammy. Oliver was quiet. That was uncommon, and Grammy nudged him gently and asked, Are you asleep? He said quietly, No, I'm not asleep. I'm just thinking. Well, what are you thinking about? After a moment, he replied, I'm thinking about that story. I don't like it. Well, Grammy was surprised. She gently picked him up and turned him around in her lap so she could see his face. She said, Well, that's interesting. What didn't you like about it? He looked down. It's not fair, he mumbled. 
Well, I hadn't thought of it that way before, Grammy said. What's not fair about it? Oliver looked up and said, It's not fair because the shepherd left the other 99 sheep all alone. They were the good ones, and he went off to take care of the other one, the one that was bad and got lost. Ah, I see, Grammy said. You think that the sheep that got lost was a bad sheep. Yes, Grammy, and I also know that Jesus isn't really talking about sheep here. He's talking about people. Really? asked Grammy. Oliver put his hands on his hips and said, This isn't my first parable, you know. <laughs> well, Grammy pretended to be offended, saying, Well, that's me told. Oliver continued, Jesus is talking about leaving the good people behind so we can go and find the bad ones. And that's not fair. He's talking about leaving people like you behind. Grammy laughed. Oh, I see. You think I'm one of the 99 sheep who never got lost. Oliver said, of course you are, Grammy. You go to church every week. You're so nice and kind to everybody. You always do the right thing. And it's not fair that Jesus isn't staying with you. You always stayed with him. Well, Grammy smiled. That's very kind of you to say, Oliver. Thank you. But I have to tell you, if I'm in this story anywhere, it's not as one of the 99. I've definitely been lost in my life many times, and I will definitely be lost again. I'm not one of the 99. And neither are you, Oliver. Let me tell you a little about your future. Oliver's eyes got big. You can tell my future, he said? Grammy said, well, not really, but I've lived long enough that I can guess about some of the things that just might happen to you. <coughs> she shifted him in her lap to make them both a bit more comfortable. And then she continued, one day you might be lost. I mean really lost, like in the woods or in a town you don't know, even with your GPS device. Oliver, in that moment, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you and give you comfort. And in a few years, you might fall in love with somebody, and you might discover that that person doesn't love you back. Oh, in that moment, you'll feel empty, lost, so very sad. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you and give you hope to move on. And you might find someday that there's something different about you, something that means you don't quite fit in, something you feel you have to hide. You'll feel alone, unwanted, lost. Oliver, Jesus wants you, no matter what, and he'll be looking for you, and he'll find you and be with you and give you courage. You might make a terrible mistake one day and hurt someone you love. Maybe it will be a moment of cruelty or just a dumb accident, but when you realize what you've done, you'll feel useless, guilty, lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you and forgive you and help you to make amends. Or you might find yourself on the other side of that, so hurt and angry at what someone did to you. You'll feel betrayed and wounded and lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you and heal you and give you the ability to forgive. You might develop an illness that's hard to deal with, and it might make you angry and bitter. You'll feel broken and lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he will find you and heal you, heal your spirit, even if not your body, and give you hope. You might find yourself grieving the loss of someone you love, maybe even me, and you'll feel lonely, abandoned, lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you and be with you, hold you for as long as you need. And you might find yourself broke, out of money, not sure how to dig yourself out of debt. You might be tempted to do things you know are wrong because of it. You'll feel confused, and bewildered, and lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you, and give you hope, and show you another way, and give you the strength to do it. And someday you might find yourself looking back on your life, wondering what it was all for, wondering what the meaning of it all was, why you're even here. You feel anxious, defeated, lost. Oliver, Jesus will be looking for you, and he'll find you, and he'll give you meaning and hope. Oliver said, Grammy, have any of those things ever happened to you? Oh, my dear child, she laughed, all of them. I've just told you my life story. I've been lost so many times over the years, in so many ways. She put her hand on Oliver's head, but every time, every single time, Jesus has found me, and he's going to find you too. 
But I thought you were a good person, Grammy, aren't you? Well, I hope so, she said. I try to be, but nobody's good all the time. And you know what else? I try not to worry about that too much. Whether I'm good or not, I know that Jesus loves me and that Jesus will find me. And Oliver said, well, then who are the 99 sheep, the ones Jesus left behind to find the lost one? And Grammy smiled. I have no idea, little one. I don't think I've ever met any of them. But I'm sure that Jesus would go looking for them, too, if they ever needed him. She looked at the grandfather clock in the corner of the room. Well, she said, look at that. It is past your bedtime. Were you trying to trick me into letting you stay up late? She tickled Oliver playfully. Then she said, I'm glad we had this talk. It's so good talking with you about the mysteries of Jesus. Together they said the Lord's Prayer. And Oliver went off to put on his pajamas for bed. A few minutes later, as Grammy tucked him in, Oliver said, Grammy, I'm glad Jesus isn't fair. I don't deserve his love, but he loves me anyway. That makes me happy. Me too, said Grammy as she kissed his head. Me too. Good night, Oliver. Amen. creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered in together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Loving Father, gather your people at Grace Lutheran in Gouldsboro so they may feel your love overflowing to them and their pastor, Richard Mowry. Guide them in their faith to be witnesses with family, friends, and neighbors of your unfailing love, God of grace. Amen. Gracious God, bless Samantha Ring, Sherry Osnick, Ronald Getz, Melissa Frack, Jessica Reinhardt, Thomas Amy, Janessa Baker, 
Power, Phyllis Beicher, who have birthdays this week. May they never forget that you are their loving father and they are your beloved children. Fill them with joy and happiness on the day you made especially for them. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you are the master of peace. Bring peace to the war in Ukraine. Be with the leaders of government and use discernment and conversations and actions that will lead to agreeable terms for war to cease. Keep them honest to you and themselves so they can serve the people they represent with integrity. God of grace. Heavenly Creator, as we see the stars in the sky, we remember your promises to Moses to multiply his descendants. We are the descendants who now have the responsibility to steward the earth you have given us through the, your giving of time, skills, and financial resources. Let us do our part to make earth as you intended it to be. God of grace. God of all compassion, let those who are grieving, suffering, and alone feel your presence. Wrap your loving arms around all, including Barbara, Barbara. Teresa, Teresa, Sharon, Sharon, Sharon Donna, 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 Keith, Keith. Bob, Bob. McKenna, McKenna. Elwood, Elwood, the family and friends of Donald, Donald. David, David. Christy. Christy, God of grace. Faithful Father, we are blessed to have members who give their time and talents to our Faith Formation Committee. Let the programs they create bring us closer to you. Help us to renew our spirit through your word, God of grace. Yeah. Father of us all, guide as we meet as a congregation today to review and vote on changes to our Constitution, to reflect how we as your people govern our membership. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. If you are staying for the meeting, you can be seated. <laughs> 